In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can do inference with RoboFlow, either if you want to do update detection, instant segmentation, and so on. Any computer vision model, we can set up the whole pipeline with RoboFlow. We can do the data annotation and so on in there. I have tons of videos covering that, how we can annotate our data, train our own custom models and so on. And now we're going to see how we can run inference with RoboFlow as well. They have built a lot of new cool features that I'm going to create future videos on. They have a bunch of models integrated in directly, how we can use our own models, but also set up a full computer vision inference pipeline. To start with, we're just jump straight into the RoboFlow inference documentation so they have this whole api where they also have the github repo so if you just open up the github repository as well this is open source code as well under apache 2.0 but this is basically just where you can run inference like you can you can self-host you can host models with roverflow you can self-host them on your own cloud or on your own local machine and so on they also have some foundation models directly out of the box that you can use you can set up workflows where we can basically just have like a detection model specify that we can have multiple different detection models in a pipeline could be that you want to run update detection first then classification and ocr model and so on then we can go and do monitoring analyze predictions and so on manage cameras and streams so this is a really nice framework and library that i'm going to cover way more in future videos the only thing that we need to do is basically just pip install the inference dash cli and then we can set up the inference servers inference server start and then it's actually like just going to run here we can see the workflow you can build the workflows in an ui inside roboflow that's for a new video so definitely make sure to stay tuned for that and also subscribe to the channel so here you can basically see we detect cars first then we do a dynamic crop to our bounding box we throw it through a model for license plate recognition or ocr model and we get the text out here at the end so we can create this whole workflow editor then we can just spin up the server and it's going to do this on all images that we feed through it they also have a bunch of cool tutorials check out the github repos and all that but here i'm just going to walk you through talk about how it can be used for how we can use it and all that so first of all, you can go inside start, you can read about like the core principles, open source, what do you have access to and so on, getting started. And also if you want to understand the architecture, how does inference work as a microservice when we have an inference server, we have clients, we send an image to the inference server, then we get a response back and this can also work locally with Docker. So they're using Docker and it's also like very good to do. I've been using this a lot lately as well because doesn't matter where you're running Docker and so on. You're not running into dependency errors, library versions and all that. That is taken care of by RoboFlow. They just create a Docker image. We can spin up that Docker container and just communicate back and forth with it as a server. It's still going to be very fast. We can connect cameras, videos and also just images to it. Here, for example, we can see we have our client. So this could be our application running. We have our inference server with our computer vision model and we have our cameras. Then we can just send camera streams back and forth to our inference server we get the start and responses back to our clients so this is like the whole workflow that we can set up for a computer vision system so you can read way more about it in here but first of all if we go inside the models we can see they have a bunch of different examples how we can run it how we can do local weights you can train them on RoboFlow, just specify the model id and it will pull it automatically so that's for another video as well so i'm going to create this whole playlist here basically just covering RoboFlow, how we can use it what are the good things and so on, and then set up the whole pipeline. They have some very cool features. It's just a few lines of code that we need to specify, but it's better if we integrate it into existing systems, run in dark containers, we either run in cloud on our local machine and so on. So it's very intuitive and also easy to work with. It might be a bit steeper learning curve. It's not hard to do, but it might be a bit harder compared to Authlytics. You guys are probably familiar with that as well. We just need to know a bit more like how it works, how does Docker work, how does the server, how do, does it pull all the information. It has a lot more features that we need to know of, but when we know that it is a very powerful tool and they have the whole suite data data handling data annotation labeling and so on we can train the models directly in there we don't even have to specify or spin up a google cola notebook we can just train it directly in there with some credits and then we just specify the model id and then we can use that in our applications and projects so this is pretty much just an example i'm just going to run it through here so first of all let's just open up a terminal and i'll just run it all the way from scratch here so first of all let's go in and pip install inference this is on my MacBook. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, you can also specify this dash GPU. 
We will pip install supervision as well. So this is board annotations and all of that on top of it. And then we pretty much good to go. Now we need to create an app.py file. So I'm going to open up my video editor. There we go. I have a new tutorial coming up as well with case estimation, which is also a pretty cool one. So let's just call it, what did it say inside the documentation? Uh, we have it here, app.py. There we go. We now have an app.py. Let's copy paste the code. So first of all here from inference, we're going to import get model. Then we can either like specify an image here. We can also throw in our own NumPy array. We can load images in from our webcam stream, video file and so on, as we usually do with OpenCV. Then we can get our model by just specifying our model ID. This is going to load a pre-trained YOLO V8 nano model. So this is very easy. Again, this is the pretty much the exact same way as Autolytics. It's going to download automatically, pull the model. If you have your own custom trained models inside Roaflow, you just need to specify the model ID here and set up your API key. So this is probably even easier than Autolytics and you have more flexibility, you have more customizations, also to the visualizations with supervision and all that. So it's a pretty nice like whole workflow that you can set up. So this is pretty much everything that we need. And then inside results, you can just extract everything so we can extract the bounding boxes confidence score classes and so on so right now let's just try to run this app.py let's see what results we get I think we got the output here. It was just a bit hard to, or a bit slow to start with. Let's try to run again. We also have some cool execution provider, which is not available on my MacBook. So here we can see that we're printing the results. So you can go and extract it, visualize it and so on. But this is how you're running inference. So we have visualization set to none, frame ID, we have the image. So this is the full image resolution. And then down here at the bottom, we can see we get our class ID, we get our track ID. We don't have that for now. And we also get all our bounding boxes. So here we can see we have a prediction, we have the bounding box, we have the XY value, the width and height. So this will be the center of the bounding box. We have the confidence score and also a class name person. So now let's go in and see how we can actually go in and visualize it. So here, for example, they have a pretty good, I'm just going to cover the first part. We still have a get model, there we go. Let's make this a bit smaller. We load in our image, we get a model ID, we do inference, so we take the first batch. So that's why we take the set of the element here. So let's just grab the rest of the code and it's going to plot this annotated image. I also have a few videos covering the supervision library for annotations. It's really cool. You can check it out inside the documentation as well and I'll cover it in future videos too. So right now we can just swap out the infer. We take the infer of our image we get the results, we can just directly convert the results into detection class from supervision. And then we have all the detections in there. We can create our bounding box annotator, our label annotator, and we just specify this annotate with our detections. It's gonna pull all the information automatically. If you want to go in and do any customizations, you can do customizations to the box annotator here when you initialize it, but also just into this annotate right here. So if you go inside the supervision documentation, you can see all the different arguments that you can specify. They have different bounding boxes. You can get a circle around the detections, a circle under the detections, change the colors, change the sizes, the labels, confidence score, and all that. So you can play around with that depending on what you want to show. But instead of like having your own for loop running using OpenCV to draw on the windows, you can just use um, supervision directly. So now we can basically just run our app again, and it's going to pull that the same image. We have an annotator, and now I'll get the 
plot image here. So this is basically just going to use matplotlib to plot them. We have all the persons. We're not specifying the confidence score and so on. Here we're detecting a, a bird and also a bird here in the bottom left corner. So this is definitely not the best model, but also just using the YOLO V8 nano model on 640 by 640 images. So yeah, we get the detections. You can go and specify if you want to visualize it in another way. You can also extract them if you want to create some alerts, triggering system, counting and all that. You can just specify that inside the results. So just have a for loop running through all those results. I just wanted to show you guys like how we can use the RoboFlow in inference because it's still only a few lines of code and we can even do the annotations when a few lines of code as well. This is all we need. The top part here doesn't really matter at all. It's just for loading in the image. You can throw in a NumPy array, PLL image, image to a URL. You can also just have OpenCV read in frames and just pass that through if you have your own webcam running. So this is just lo running locally in future videos. We're going to see how we can run it with Docker. That's much better. We don't have to do all the installations and so on. Then we just have a server that we can connect to. We send a request. We get a response back with the exact same things. It just makes it easier to scale. We don't have to deal with the dependencies. We can transfer to different systems and so on if you're looking to build computer vision systems on top of it. The models here doesn't really matter like if you're not building a system around and so on as I've been talking about on my channel as well. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of like get started, see how we can run inference with RoboFlow. We're going to cover the documentation, all the features that they have, the whole platform, how we can go from the platform into the code because we don't really have to write any code at all. We just need to have these templates, these examples, do all the handling in the RoboFlow platform and run it in our own computer vision systems and applications and then build our other software components around it. So definitely stay tuned for those videos. I'm going to create a whole playlist covering everything. This is really important to know. And I even think that RoboFlow is, is better than Autolytics. If you actually want to build like software systems around it and so on, there's both pros and cons with both of them. Might be a bit hard to go in and do modifications and so on. But again, it's always good to have that option. Stay tuned for those videos. Hope you learned a ton this one here. And then I'll see you in the next one.